Britain and America got together for a party at Carriages, London, a curtain raiser to the Royal Command Film Show in aid of the Cinematograph Trade Benevolent Fund. Representing the fund, Mr. Reginald Bromhead was there with his wife to receive the guests. One of the brightest stars was Ray Millat, Academy Award winner who began his film career in Britain 17 years ago. Deborah Carr, with husband, was soon chatting to the young American discovery, 21-year-old Dorothy Malone, now well on the road to stardom. At this party, you've got to keep moving if you can, and Ray Millan soon finds himself joining the group. More British glamour in the person of Sally Gray, closely followed by Eric Porton. Into the blaze of arc lights comes lovely Joan Bennett, taking her place in this spectacular gathering of famous names. Soon, many of the party had to leave for the Empire Theatre for a late night rehearsal of their part in the following day's show. The camera catches Kim Hunter, who appears in the Royal Command film. And here we meet Hollywood's Maria Montes, getting a grand introduction to Britain at this party of parties. And now, less than 24 hours later, a vast flood of humanity surges around the Empire Leicester Square on a red-letter day in British cinema history, the first Royal Command film performance. Big names of the film industry, producers, directors and stars, had literally to fight their way through a sea of wildly enthusiastic spectators. And here's one of the first arrivals, Stuart Granger, none the worse for the ordeal. Bigger crowds every minute made the scene look more and more like the victory celebrations as world-famous personalities began to arrive thick and fast. Even in Hollywood, the American stars had never seen anything like this. <music> Greeting the guests in the theatre foyer was Mr. J. Arthur Rank, whose genius and vision have brought British films to new heights of world prestige. Among the stars whose names are household words was John Mill. Michael Redgrave brought his nine-year-old daughter Vanessa and Margaret Lockwood was busy looking after her five-year-old Margaret Julia. Another distinguished guest was Mr. Attlee. Out in Leicester Square, the police were doing a grand job trying to care away for the royal cars but the crowd's excitement swept all before it. This was a big occasion, and they were going to make the most of every minute. At last, after a 12-minute delay, their majesties, the king and queen, with the princesses, entered the theatre to the sounds of a tremendous cheer. First came a meeting with film chiefs from both sides of the Atlantic, and their majesties had a special greeting for Mr. and Mrs. Rank. Then came a big moment for the young daughters of John Mills, Michael Redgrave and Margaret Lockwood as they presented bouquets to the Queen and the two princesses, a scene which charmed the royal family as much as the proud parents themselves. part of the command performance was about to begin with the premiere of the great new British film, A Matter of Life and Death. After the film, the most impressive collection of stars ever seen in one London theatre took part in a cavalcade of movies. More dazzling scenes followed after the show when the stars were presented to their majesties. Pat O'Brien from Hollywood. And now, our own Sally Gray. Vivian Lee and her husband, Laurence Olivier, and Jesse Love, star of The Silent Days. Dorothy Malone, visiting Britain for the first time. Bud Flanagan, dear to the hearts of millions, and Will Hay, equally at home on stage or screen. And 
And last but not least, the latest headliner... An evening of many thrills, which has brought great financial benefit to a most deserving cause, the film industry's own benevolent fund. All thanks to our king and queen for making possible an unforgettable occasion in the story of the British screen. Thank you.